Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for joining us on Ludicrous Feed on episode two of The Nightly Charge, where we have a look at what's been happening in the news with regards to electric cars and renewables in general, especially what's been happening in Australia over the last week or so. It's certainly been making the news here in our country. So let's have a look at uh, electric cars on Google. Cars, we're gonna search that. And we're going to go to news and we'll see what's been going on. So the first article that comes up is something about instant power. Let's have a look at what the Sydney Morning Herald has to say. Instant power, just one of the lures for buyers eyeing electric cars. Okay, so let's see what they're talking about. It says that only 2,216 EVs were sold last year, making up 0.2% of the Australian market leaving the country behind the likes of Norway, where plug-in cars grabbed almost 60% of sales last month. Very impressive numbers from Norway. So let's have a look. One break has been the steep upfront cost, yes, which we know. Range anxiety is another issue. Lack of public infrastructure, so recharging points. Uh, and let's see what else. So only 11 uh, models available or soon to be. Uh, as many as 60 models on the market within three years. So that's very good news. Uh, talks about the Model 3, range up to 499 kilometers, price about $60,000. So that's what the Herald is predicting what the Model 3 will be like when it comes here. Uh, this is a gentleman by the name of Raba Marabi. Uh, he's looking to drive from Sydney to the Gold Coast, that's good. Yeah, this gentleman forked out $180,000 for his Tesla Model X. Look, admittedly, that is a lot of money for an electric car in Australia. Uh, certainly it's unachievable for a lot of people, unfortunately. So hopefully, as uh, more cars come on the market, they'll certainly become more affordable for more people. The Model X has a 100 kilowatt hour battery, and he says he'll only need two charges to get him from Sydney to, Sydney to the Gold Coast this weekend. So I think that's a reasonable time frame, two charges for uh, his road trip here. Not being able to stop at a service station is really cool. I have to agree with him just there. They reckon the Model 3 will be available from July. That sort of fits in with uh, Elon Musk's tweet about the Model 3 starting production in, um, in May 2019. The next one is the Hyundai Kona electric range, 449Ks, uh, priced from 59990 There's a picture of Scott Naga, which uh, is the head of marketing, I think, or uh, e-mobility at least in Hyundai Australia. I had a chat with him uh, at the expo recently, so check out that video with me and Scott where we looked at the Kona inside. What does Scott have to say here? So, uh, no, that's just a picture of Scott. Okay, nothing about Scott here in the article just yet. Um, so, let's see, another gentleman here, Charles Dale Glish, retired engineering type, built three EVs himself, waited two years to get his hands on the first Kona. He's got solar powers as well, solar power panels at his home as well. Uh, his Kona cost him $71,000 and is preparing to drive to Uluru and back. That would be pretty cool. Um, figuring his 450k range will get him between recharge points. I tend to agree. I think, you know, if you've got a three-phase charger along the way and you can plan your route, you can certainly get there with the 450km range. Nissan Leaf, which I also looked at in the, the uh, Expo recently, 270k range, priced from $49,990. Uh, Nissan claims to have sold more than 400,000 of its EVs. Uh, that's pretty impressive across the world. First car to include bi-directional charging, so that's that vehicle to grid charging technology which uh, people are hoping will come to Australia, which will allow your car to power your home as well, or even power the grid which, uh, which may allow your feed-in tariff during peak times. Pretty exciting stuff. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the next article here. National Grid has more immediate challenges than electric cars. Well, let's see what this one is about. So this article says that, I'm just gonna scroll through quickly. Power industry is facing more immediate tests, which is absorbing the leap in supplies of renewable energy, particularly solar, and the prospect of more coal-fired plants suffering sudden failures. Um, not on AEMO's list, which is the, uh, what's AEMO stand, stand for again? It stands for the Australian Energy Market Operator, which basically is the market for selling and buying power to uh, retailers across the country. Is any plan for a national grid that is compatible with Australia's Paris climate commitments, which is a bit of a concern. Uh, maintaining the national electricity market, the world's largest single grid, has always had its issues. Uh, renewables allow consumers to be both consumers and exporters of power. So that's the feed-in tariff that uh, our solar panel operators and buyers 
and uh, owners have the ability to sell our power back to the grid. Too much of a good thing. Appears to have difficulty absorbing the boom in large-scale solar and wind farms. Interesting. There are regions where supplies are overwhelming grid loads and recommended restraining generators at the edge of the grid through price and output curves. One example is the 200 megawatt Silverton wind farm in far western New South Wales has at its price and receipts for the power to cut to 80 cents per the dollar in 2018-2019. <coughs> yep, so it looks like there's there's sort of need to balance uh, the power that's been generated across the country. So that's uh, that's what that article is talking about. Very complicated the energy grid really and. Um, Particularly now with renewables, you know, having helping to feed in the grid, but hopefully we see more renewables and better management really all across the country. EV opportunities and costs: collapsing price of energy storage, whether in the form of a home battery, mobile ones, on EVs, or grid-scale units, is opening up other challenges as well as opportunities. That's kind of what I'm saying. There needs to be better management of power in this country. Uh, significant implications for the power network were not expected to kick in until after 2025, at which time it, when electric vehicles and petrol price diesel ones reach price parity. Interesting. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, uh, this is what I said here. Against this optimism is the prospect that with poor management, grids will come under extra strain as increasing number of EV drivers charging their cars at the same time add to peak demand rather than reducing it. That's kind of been in the news recently about how EVs are going to strain the electric grid. Look, I think most people are going to charge their car overnight, really, when not many people are using the power. So, again, that's an opportunity for retailers to set, like, an EV price, or at least, like, a controlled load where they can manage their power production better, or at least selling the power better by sort of not forcing, but encouraging users to charge their cars at night time, like they do with hot water currently. I think that's an, an option. Another thing is obviously vehicle to grid. You know, the vehicles can certainly be a provider of electricity to the grid as well. So that's, you know, there are a lot of options there. It's not a scare tactic, I think, enough to put people off EVs. You know, I think with better management, we can certainly overcome these challenges. Okay, consumers in charge. Well, this is again talking about the, um, uh, this is like a talk about vehicle to grid in the situation here. Um, so yeah, lots of challenges, but I think it can be certainly be done. And uh, it's certainly been a scare tactic in the last week by some parts of uh, politics. And um, I think we can certainly overcome it for sure. What to do when your electric car is on fire? Well, I've certainly seen a few car fires in the US with uh, Teslas on fire. From what I've seen, te the batteries do burn a long time. Let's see what this article talks about. Um, here's an industry which will be deeply affected by electric vehicles firefightings. firefighting. Um, electric vehicles represent a serious design break from car engines of the past and their battery packs represent a fire danger if these packs are punctured during an accident. Serious fires after electric vehicle accidents have become big news. Yep, that's what I've been talking about. Uh, so this video talks about how to combat that. So let's have a look down here. So with an electric car fire you need water. That might sound obvious but in many cases modern fire departments use foam or dry chemicals that are better than old-fashioned water at suppressing fire. While dry chemicals are great at putting down ordinary f electrical fires, they may be ineffective with a fire stemming from a car's lithium-ion battery. Water is the best approach to a lithium-ion fire. Uh, this doesn't mean you should initiate a sprinkler and attempt to do dose the whole fire by moving back and forth. Rather, Keep a direct and focused stream on the battery until it relents. Don't touch the high voltage components. You know, that's sort of common sense. Okay, well that's good to know from a firefighter's perspective. Let's have a look at article number four. Instant power, one of the lures. So I guess that's um, yeah, that's one of the things I was talking about. I guess you know, sure, you know, there's not enough infrastructure as such. But if you think about it, you can actually plug your car anywhere in the world with a with a power point. So I think that's kind of what the article is kind of saying too, that you can charge your car up anywhere there's a power point. Uh, instant power, you know, you can't charge, you can't fuel your petrol car at night in your home. That's just impossible unless you've got heaps of jerry cans with, with petrol, which is impractical. But having a power point at home uh, without even a specialized charger, you can certainly just power your car at night time. So that's uh, one big benefit of having an electric car. Trump is trying, trying to stand in the way of electric cars. I'm just going to quickly breeze through this and see what Donald Trump, the President of the United States, has to say about electric cars. Well, the President mocks low emission vehicles, the rest of the country is busy paving the way for their big day. Very similar parallels to what's happening here in Australia. 
it sounds like they're on a very similar path to us that uh, there's no sort of joint <clears throat> effort to electrify the whole fleet like it is in Europe so I think you know we could certainly look to the US to see what has worked and what hasn't in their country US is a bit different I guess because each different state has their own laws with regards to um, to what what can be what bill can be passed what laws can be passed so you know each state can kind of, state can kind of do their own thing uh, which is a bit different to us here in the Australia where if you want policy I guess it's a national thing although having said that New South Wales last year did uh, sort of have an EV policy as well um, so yeah I guess that could you know there are some parallels there with with the US electric cars fuel surge in demand for servo sites in Logan Logan being in uh, southeast Queensland let's see what they're saying here Courier Mail that's Queensland's paper yeah okay I think this is a firewall so I can't read that article let's just see what the uh, thumbnail says the push for electric cars has sparked a surge in demand for service station land across the southeast in the past year as developers snap up okay I wonder if that's talking about progressive entrepreneurs looking at sites for charging one day I don't know I'm sort of speculating here because I can't imagine why electric cars would cause a demand in you know service station unless it was like electric service stations anyway electric cars a value assessment I think Australian has a firewall as well so yeah it does so I'm gonna go back and just read the headline here Electric cars are suddenly an election issue. The Labor Party has advanced an ambitious plan to make 50% of all cars on the road, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's probably doing an evaluation of how cost-effective electric cars are, I'm just guessing. Tesla just made it harder for to buy its cheapest $35,000 US car, electric car. So I think that's the news that Tesla announced yesterday that they're making autopilot standard across all their fleet, including... Um, the Tesla Model 3 Standard Plus Edition. You can't buy the Standard Edition anymore without Autopilot. Um, so you can only buy the Standard Plus. $39,500 with Autopilot included, which apparently is cheaper than what it would have cost to buy Autopilot with the Standard Edition. <coughs> I think if you, um, uh, I think there are some features where if you don't want it, you have to actually go into the store or at least call them up to try and get it off the Standard Plus Edition. But if you want to go through the website, you, this is the minimum cost now for the auto uh, with Model 3, $39,500 with Autopilot included. Um, I'm sure that's going to come across to Australia as well. The play the Tesla are doing is that um, with Autopilot standard across all their vehicles, they're also allowing the US um, leasing, so you can actually lease your Model 3s but there's no option to buy the car at the end of the lease, so Tesla will take the car back. With the plan, I think, Tesla, that they are going to start their own ride-sharing service after a few years, and you'll have you know, lots of cars with autopilot. Are they going to start an autopilot self-driving fleet for ride-sharing? Pretty exciting. I think that, uh, that could signal another disruption for the ride-sharing service, for sure. Interesting, I'll follow that up a bit later on in another video, too. All right, so uh, Mini, yeah, I think Mini's releasing an electric car in Australia, I think, as well. So I'll look in, more into that for you guys. Um, hydrogen power, that is a whole kettle of fish, which I won't go into today. Otherwise, that would get me upset. But just quickly, electric cars with hydrogen fuel could certainly be a stopgap, or at least an interim, while the battery tech catches up. There's one benefit of hydrogen power is that it does allow a longer range, even though the efficiency is not as good as electric battery electric cars. But the long range... Um, you know, certainly is a uh, compelling argument um, to match like a diesel powered car, for example, that could do a thousand miles. I think hydrogen could certainly have a place in that regard. All right, guys, well, thank you very much for watching. That is my uh, summary of the last couple of days worth of news uh, in electric vehicles in Australia. Like I said, it's certainly an election issue at the moment and uh, very exciting times for Australia. Um, at least the conversation is now there for people to talk about electric cars. Um, I think those who are keen are going to do their own research and realize, you know what, electric cars are actually quite compelling. The same argument that I've been putting forward and others around me in the EV community have been putting forward over the last few years. Uh, we certainly can't live without them now. And I'm hoping, hopefully that people in Australia will realize that in time to come. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I love hearing your comments, hearing your discussions. And I stand by now for my hashtag Roadster Down Under Pledge. And as always, happy charging. 
I do solemnly promise, should I win a Roadster 2020 in Tesla's new referral program, to list this vehicle on an electric car sharing platform to allow all Australians an opportunity to drive this magnificent car as part of a greater effort to bring the electric vehicle to this great nation. Hashtag Roadster Down Under. Help me by using my referral code Thomas7208. Thanks for watching and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. Happy charging!